morning y'all um it's been a while since i posted anything on facebook or made a video or whatnot and um, the holy spirit's kind of been laying it on my heart to to start speaking again um, as far as some of the things that i come to understand and, and one of the, kind of what he's laid on my heart is rather than pointing this camera at my ugly mug and and just staring into this camera um, as I roll around out here in the oil field in these backwoods, back roads and backwoods, I guess you could say no woods, but um, back roads, uh, and call it riding with Jesus because that's what I do daily. I run around out here and I check my oil tanks and I check production and I listen to, to different sermons of, of a few that God has put me under to, to learn and, and equip myself as I go through my daily daily walk and and I pastor my own home of my wife and my children and my friends that God has placed around me so I don't know how this will go this may be a quite a bit of a shaky video um, but let's see how this 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 comes about and um and just talk about a few things you know there's several things that go through my mind each and every day as I see other people operate um, either in Christ or out of Christ and I still remember what it's like operating outside of Christ and I'm glad that I don't no longer operate that way even when I do trip stumble and fall I'm still in Christ and under Christ um, and I'm thankful that Jesus has placed who he has placed in my life to lead me and guide me um, in certain truths uh, but mainly it's just getting down and getting into the word of Jesus, you know, getting to the word of, of Christ and what he says and and what did he say? You know, what does he say about how we operate in this situation or that situation? Um, and usually if we will learn to remove our emotions from the situation um, and just meditate on what the word says, um, we'll find ourselves coming out of these complicated situations a little quicker um, and the cool thing about my life is I get to listen to the word day in and day out and run around out here and there's no telling what I might see like here we're coming up on this big herd of buffalo out here by one of my leases and I think it's pretty neat something you don't see every day um, and sometimes that gives me peace as I see different wildlife and you know um, sorry my truck's a little bit dirty today from the snow but you know this is this is my daily life and this is how I go from uh, one minute to the next is is just what God puts in front of me and how do I respond to that how do you respond to what God puts in front of you um, that becomes key and plays a major factor in, in a lot of what we do sometimes um, this road's a little slick and I'm only in two wheel drive so we're just going to play around a little bit and he's down through here um, come on now I may have to stop and put this thing full down in a minute but maybe not but anyway that's you know it's just part of my day you never know what you're going to run across out here in the oil field. It's just me, my truck, and my wells, and Jesus. And that has given me quite the relationship with my father um, in the last five years. Uh, as I have time to stop and minister to someone if they're having issues when need be, um, I have time to stop and minister to myself whenever I get frustrated. Do you minister to yourself? You know, these are all questions and, and things that we can ask ourselves and answer for ourselves if we'll get out of our own way. Um, one of the things that I'm noticing is our, is our words, um, especially due to Facebook. We don't, we don't allow words to mean anything anymore. Um, we've got this idea that we're entitled to our own opinion, and our, our opinion trumps someone else's opinion and that's just simply not the case um, a word is supposed to be tr have a have a definite meaning you know it can vary and maybe have a double dual meaning but we've got to where we just make words mean whatever we want and and in that um, 
we have a hard time understanding scripture sometimes. Um, because scripture was written from an e uh, Eastern standpoint, an Eastern culture and mindset. And we're, we try to apply that same mindset to our Western culture and theology and idea, ideology um, that we get things all twisted, you know. Um, God has a set standard that He has designed from the beginning, and He doesn't waver or falter or change that just to appease you or not you or me and, and our feelings. Um, he really doesn't care about our feelings. I promise you. Um, and He does love us absolutely, 100%. But when we start reading Scripture and we start reading the whole of it and getting the idea of who God really is, um, we become less and less important. And he becomes more and more important. Just like it says in John 3 and 30 that I shall decrease and he shall increase. Um, well, we get that all twisted in our American ideology of, you know, it's all about me. That Christ should begin to decrease and I should become, I should be um, increasing. Uh, especially Christians, you know. Uh, the mindset of the Christian is, in the American in Western culture is, is completely ludicrous. I don't get it sometimes. Um, although I do because at one point it was all about me. But once you come to Christ, should you not change? I mean, is that not what um, 2 Corinthians 2.17 says? Or 5.17? Um, that I should become a new creation, a new creature? When I come to Christ? How come we're not noticing that? How come when I go to church, I don't see a difference in the church than I do of the country club down the street. Why is that? Well, it's because we simply refuse to um, assimilate to what God's called us to do. Um, he called us in to become a new creature. And we can't do that whenever we allow the culture around us to dictate who we are. When we allow culture around us to dictate what words mean. Um, we've got words so screwed up here in the American system, it's not even funny. I almost have to go and and look up words that people use to try and figure out what they're what they're trying to say um, on basic words, and it's it's ridiculous. There's no way to operate, you know. Um, it's like God; He has a set standard from the beginning of time to end of time. Um, he did not change that just because Jesus came on the scene and became our substitution, our propitiation. His character did not change in that. Um, a few things changed. Um, one of them being that uh, he granted us the ability to go straight to the Father without having to have an uh, uh, intercessor or a priest to do it for us. But other than that, that's about the only thing that changed. Um, he gave us a direct line to the Father. Now there's a few things that vary and changes, um, but to to the normal Christian, if you ask them what happened when Jesus showed up, they'll say that the law's been done away with. We don't have to follow um, Torah anymore. We don't have to do this anymore. Um, all we got to do is say a little prayer and believe in Jesus and then go about living our life however suits us. Well, that's not what I get out of reading God's Word from Genesis to Revelation. I don't see how anybody gets that. You know, it's like saying, okay, well, God has a rule, has set rules in the beginning, and then He has set rules at the end, but somewhere in the middle, He decides to let go of these laws and rules and regulations for a time just to appease man. Now, does that not sound ludicrous? Because if you think about it, at the end of the day, that's what we say when, when we say, I don't have to follow the law. The, the scriptures say we're no longer under the law. That is correct. The law does no longer convict me. Um, when I stand before the Father at the end, you know, the day of judgment, I will not be convicted under the law. Christ will stand in there as my intercessor, um, as my advocate. If I have walked to seek Him out, to to seek a relationship with him, that will happen. If I don't, 
his words in Matthew 7, 23 is going to ring very loud and very sadly to many, many people who believe they have eternal life in, in, in Christ. Um, when he says, depart from me, for I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. Now, if we take that word iniquity um, and break it down to what it truly means, it is lawlessness, but even more so, it's lawlessness of the heart. See, we have transgression of the law and we have iniquity of the law. Transgression is, is crossing the law, breaking the law um, unintentionally, but breaking it nonetheless. Iniquity is breaking the law because we desire to do our thing rather than follow and abide the law. Um, an analogy of that is back when I was drinking, there's a law on the books that says if I drink and I get in a vehicle and I drive, that is illegal and I can be punished for that. Now when I quit drinking, that law is still on the books. That law still applies, but I'm no longer under that law. Does that make sense? Uh, I still follow that law though, right? Because I don't get in my vehicle and drink and drive anymore. Uh, so the law's still there, it just um, doesn't convict me no more. It's the same thing with God's law. God's law is still there. But when we come to Christ and we build that relationship with Christ, we're no longer convicted by the law. We are bound by the law um, as far as, you know, the law shows us how far left we can go and how far right we can go without being, um, without transgressing against what God has deemed uh, moral right and wrong. Does that make sense? Um, so as we look at it that way, when I hear people say, we no longer have to follow the law, it makes me cringe. Uh, because the scriptures say, those who teach that the law no longer exists will be least in the kingdom of heaven. Well, might want to check ourselves when we start, especially those of us who, who teach and, and lead and follow. And lead and follow. Um, I'm going to have to put a pause on it here for just a minute because i got to run up here and check this tank and then we'll get back into this. Okay, I'm back. Um, so, like I said, I, the Holy Spirit has put it on my on my spirit to uh, to begin speaking again about certain things, and I think this is the best way to do it um, to maybe give y'all something other than, like I said, I, I see a lot of videos. I, I follow a lot of guys who who do the same similar thing that they just pick up their phone and they they speak on what the Holy Spirit leads them to, to talk about um, but my life is is more than just sitting at a desk or or what have you um, I get to go out day in and day out and enjoy God's creation all of this that we see up here is God's creation um, everything that is made was made by him for him and through him um, we get to as humans enjoy that creation and we should um, sometimes whenever my emotion is in the way of intellect and I get into this idea that poor Matt you know there just ain't a whole lot going right for him right now you know my finances are, are struggling um, everything I look at I'm struggling with um, but then really how hard am I struggling because um, I'm not getting persecuted per se like um, like our patriarchs were persecuted and even like our own brothers and sisters over in other countries are persecuted right now um, for for following Christ so I have a roof over my head I have plenty of food in the freezer in the cabinets um, that's more than enough to be thankful each and every day that what God has provided. But again, it goes back to that American Western mindset that, you know, we have to have a certain um, degree of items to be considered successful. Um, if your car is more than five or ten years old, then um, you're not as success successful as the guy across the street that gets a new truck every couple years. Um, 
if your job's not two hundred thousand dollars a year and you have money in the bank then you're not considered successful um, we have a whole lot of standards that we we place on our lifestyles to consider whether one is successful or not and it goes back to the definition of words it also um, plays in definition of, of standard of living um, and we get all of that twisted um, what really aggravates me when I'm listening to people quote um, certain evangelists and pastors of what I call the the prosperity gospel um, and how I see it sets people up to fail because the prosperity gospel says you come to Christ and everything gets better um, you get the new car, you get the girl, you you know, you get money in your bank. Um, that is a possibility, but it's not a guarantee. When I read in scriptures, um, the scriptures bear out a little bit different um, ideology and theology on that. You know, uh, Jesus said to follow me, the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Um, you know, to correctly quote that, the birds of the air have nests foxes have holes but the son of man have nowhere to lay his head to follow christ that is um, a more, more likely scenario that we are going to have to begin to give up certain um, comforts um, in order to truly follow christ and the reason being is is when we have those comforts um, when we have fifty thousand in the bank for a rainy day and we have a year's food supply in the cabinets. We tend to lean more on our own ability rather than leaning on God's ability. And the scriptures tell us we are to lean on Him in all things. So if our um, our character, our spirit, is such a spirit that um, finds us being prideful in that, God's going to take that away. Um, God's going to ask us to give that up in order for us to fully 100% rely on him um, that's where I'm finding myself in uh, me and my family me and my wife and kids uh, because it's always uh, I came from the, the ideology that I'll get it on my own everything I have I've gotten from the sweat of my brow and in and, and the blood sweat and tears I didn't ask nobody for nothing and don't need nothing from no one I get it by myself well that kind of conflicts with Christ saying I have to come to him for everything he will provide for me what I need um, we have conflict there so therefore I've as I've come to him the more I follow him the more I understand it seems like the more I have to give up um, the more I have to lay down in order to keep my mind and my heart solely focused on Christ and again hold on guys let me run up and check this tank and we're back. Um, so my day consists of, of riding around about 175 to 200 miles a day on these old dirt roads, a few highway roads, um, going from one lease to the other and recording production and getting it to the office so they know how much money they've made today, um, how much oil is coming out of the ground. Well, a lot of that is like like our daily walk um, for any of us uh, we live on a schedule we walk by a schedule we go from one one issue to the next hopefully in all that we have things we look forward to we have um, certain things that brings hope and well to look forward to I guess you could say easy um, if we do not have that then we find ourselves getting in a state of depression and that I think I found myself in that in these last five years since I've chosen to follow Christ and a lot of the things that I've I've laid down and given up not because I had to but because I wanted to and then I knew that those things um, could no longer interact with my new lifestyle and following Christ um, some of them was was fairly easy to lay down some things were quite difficult um, and initially um, I fought against it it's like no that's mine I earned it um, 
But when we truly start seeking God, Matthew 6, 30, 30 tells us to seek God with all our heart. Um, seek ye first the kingdom, and all these things will be added unto you. Uh, did you catch that? That's what most people say. Scripture actually reads, um, Seek ye first the kingdom and His righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you. Um, see, we like to, to extract and put away certain words and phrases whenever we are following the Scriptures. And so if I take out the part and His righteousness then I can find myself into, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to church on Sundays and uh, even on Wednesdays and, and I read my Bible every now and again and I'm seeking God. But see, if I'm seeking God in His righteousness, then that puts me in a, in a category, in a place where I am I'm seeking every aspect of God. His what I would deem good and bad qualities. Um, there are no bad qualities in God, of course, we know this. But there are certain um, standards that God requires that in our own mind, in our own hearts, if we would be honest with each other, we would say, that is not, that's not acceptable. Uh, it's not what I want. Um, but we have to be honest with ourselves. And that's hard for us to do. It's real hard for us to do um, in front of other people, but it's even more hard for us to do in, a, in our own dark room, all by ourselves. And when we're truly examining ourselves, it'd be better if we just lied to ourselves. And we do it all the time. Um, that's why Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is desperately wicked uh, above all who shall know it. We get down to it at the end of the day, and I'm, I'm totally honest with you and myself. Um, there's a lot of things that I have to do um, just out in public that I really don't like doing. Um, there's times I really don't want to say hi to you. Um, I would just soon be left alone, um, to be honest. There's times when people that I, that I love and care about have issues and they come to me with those issues that I just soon not deal with um, I'm not in the mood for it I'm in a bad mood or whatever the case may be but I really don't want to deal with your issues um, but in Christ Christ has changed that in me so even though I may not want to do this or that I know that it is for the betterment of not only your good, but also mine. A lot of times when I'm ministering to someone, um, in the process of that, it, it heals and fixes something that I've been having an issue with, and that wasn't what I set out to do, but that's how God operates in, in each of our lives. It's like, um, when you're teaching something, you probably learn more being the teacher than the students do or you would if you was the student and God knows this but we don't want to get down and we don't want to get honest with ourselves um, I don't want to lay out there that I'm down deep down inside I'm, I'm not only a prideful human but I'm a very selfish person and that I'd rather take the last hamburger because I'm hungry than to leave it for someone that might be even more hungry than I. Um, just to kind of lay that out there as a, uh, an analogy. Um, I want what I want, and you want what you want. And if that happens to coincide with God's Word, then that's great. But if it don't, if we are not diligently seeking Christ, not diligently seeking God's will for us, we will operate in that selfishness every single time. And I don't care who you are, um, that is the case. It's the fallen nature of human, of the humans. Wow. So how do we get to a point where we're led by the flesh. I mean, led by the Spirit rather than the flesh. Well, we have to put God on our minds 
24 7. we have to read his word um, daily and figure out what God's concept of morality and right and wrong is and then it becomes to overshadow it becomes it it starts to overshadow our own desires and then our own desires become less and less that's that's how we become less and God becomes more in our lives it's not easy to do um, out here uh, my job like I said checking these tanks I can lie to my employer very easily I could set it the house and record um, some numbers that I have a pretty good idea of what each lease is going to make every day um, hope that nothing goes wrong and there's oil spewing out somewhere because I'm at the house I wouldn't catch and I could do this and, and I could get away with it for a time um, and even be correct with the numbers that I'm sending in uh, and then claiming working 8, 10, 12, 14 hours however long it may be that I want to claim and nobody would be none the wiser but eventually something's going to happen at one of these leases and oil is going to be spewing out on the ground and then I'm going to be exposed my line has, has eventually will become exposed and it may take a time it may take weeks um, but regardless at the end of the day um, we're, we're going to try to justify and get away with what we can until we get a, a spirit of conviction that you know I just don't want to be like that no more I don't want to I don't want to get away with it no more I, I just want to do it right and that's the best analogy I can I can I can think of because really there is no way anybody knows whether I come out here and and look at all these leases every day or not um, there's really not a day like yesterday and today where the snow was on the ground yeah um, if there's no tire tracks through the snow going to the lease and my boss drives by he's gonna know I didn't go buy it um, but on a normal everyday day um, there's no way to know well that's the way we operate in life we think nobody knows um, there's no tracks in the snow for us to have to be honest and truthful with ourselves as we operate so we think we're getting away with it but to um, further on that to further uh, expound on that uh, that idea that I don't you know if I don't go by my leases no one knows well here's the deal I go by my leases every day I have a set way that I go by my leases because it leaves certain um, tracks um, evidence that I'm the one that drove by that that day now if you come out on my lease you're not gonna you're not gonna follow that same pattern so I'm gonna know if someone else come out on my lease other than me well that's kind of like God he knows whether we're doing what we're supposed to be doing or not I um, mean we can lie to everybody else but we can't lie to God but yet we still tend to think that we can and get away with it um, well you may and you might get away with it all your life but we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and then we're not going to get away with it it says the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom or the beginning of all knowledge um we have taken that and uh, even taught on it myself that it's not a, a fear of God that we are afraid of God but rather a, a respectful fear of God that's wrong um, to fear God is to fear God it means that uh, do touch the ark after God said don't touch it God struck him dead not saying God that existed then is still the same God 
Um, he could strike us dead just because he's God. Um, and be in every legal right because we have transgressed the law in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Uh, just like Uzziah did when he touched the ark. Regardless of what Uzziah thought he was doing right or, or wrong. Uh, so to fear God is to fear God. Be afraid of God. Be very afraid of God. And the fact that he runs the show. And if he wants to take your life, he will take your life. Uh, and we have no entitlement otherwise. Uh, we don't get to heaven and go, whoa, hold on, God, I'll put you on trial. I read in Isaiah 6 when Isaiah went before the throne of God. And Isaiah, a man who talked with God literally all the time, felt the, the, the naked, nakedness of him, his sins, his body, his flesh, his unclean lips as he says it in Scripture, that he is not worthy to stand before this holy and righteous God. Are we any different than Isaiah? Uh, in our own minds here in America, we say, yeah, just by our actions. We may not come out and say, oh, yeah, but by our actions, um, we deem ourselves a whole lot more higher than what we ought to be. Uh, God's going to have to answer for the way he's treated me. No, you're going to answer for the way you've transgressed his law. You're going to answer for your um, complete and total depravity um, throughout your life. And you're going to fall at your face at his feet when this happens. Um, so, make no mistake, when it says fear God, it means fear God. We've lost that. Um, I remember growing up, my dad, I feared that man. Um, when he said, boy, you better stop, or boy, you better get her done, there was no arguing. There was no put dad on trial, you know. It was do what dad said. These children today, this this new new group of, uh, of millennials that are coming up, um, I don't I don't understand. They they put their own parents on trial basically when they disobey what their parents tell them, and then we wonder why our cultures went to hell in a handbasket. We have no respect. We have no morals. Uh, morals is fluid now. Respect is fluid. Um, Let me pause again. Okay, so I see this video is getting a little long. I've just been talking as I rode around. Um, but this is my idea on... Uh